So for the new year, I wanted to start vlogging and showing you that even if you work full time or you're a busy mum like me, that you can still make the time um, and grow an amazing garden, even if you don't have a lot of time. So every week I'm going to show you a snippet of the little things that I do each day in the garden and how the bigger picture of that is that I am able to grow lots of stuff in my garden and it doesn't have to be really time consuming. You can achieve amazing things with a little bit of time. Um, something that works really well for me is something called a power hour or that even works if you've got 20 minutes where you set yourself a timer and just get through as many jobs as you can um, that works really well if I've got a window of time whether it's between uh, homework or after school clubs or whatever's going on that if I set that timer and I dedicate that time to being in the garden and give myself that time it's amazing what you can get done so that's something that works really well for me so I hope that this weekly vlog will give you an idea of just the little bits that I'm doing in the garden and then you might be able to do some of those things as well just have a little quick look um, at the container garden. Let's just do a little bit of deadheading, I think. It's really important, even in the winter months and early spring, to keep on top of the deadheading. It will just keep these flowers coming. What you don't want to do is for the plant to go to seed and then stop producing flowers. I must confess, I'm not very good at keeping on top of this at the moment because of the lack of light, but at least every two weeks I'm going over them. So exciting to see these spring bulbs popping up. Container gardens looking pretty sad, but something that caught my eye is this gorgeous hellebore. It's the first year I've ever had hellebores in the garden and I just can't believe how many flowers they are producing in the winter so amazing which reminds me i've got another two i need to plant in the ground so it's actually getting dark now and i've got to go inside and cook the kids tea but yeah just having half an hour today to do a little bit of seedlings just have a little mooch around um clears the head it's just really relaxing and you never regret making the time to pop out in the garden. There's nothing better than plant delivery day. Today, this lot of plants have arrived. I ordered them just after Christmas, took advantage of the Crocus January sale. So now I've got a lot of things to get in the ground, but my border isn't even ready yet. All of these will be going into the border over here actually marked out now on the ground very very roughly with bamboo canes the rough shapes that I want my new borders to be um, and then I need to move a lot of the existing planting um, and add in all of these lovely new bits so I've got a bit of a mix I've got some steeper grass here which actually are a much better size than I thought they would be. Um, these are the, I think they're called Carl Forsters or something. They're a really, really tall grass. Then all of these are Salvia Caradonna. Then I've got three, I don't know how to pronounce that, Haconocloa macra. That is a type of deciduous grass. And then I've got five Geranium Rosans because they're lovely and I don't have enough. It is really windy here today, uh, but I think not quite windy enough to stop me opening up my greenhouse. So I'm going to open that up because it's really important to keep your greenhouse ventilated at this time of year. I think because it is winter and I'm not out here every day, I always get so excited when I come in the greenhouse because there is always something different. Um, and I can spot the growth because I only come in here a few times a week. So let's take a look. I can actually see a 
flower bud coming on an osteospermum cutting that I took. The cornflowers have grown a lot in a week. Um, the mulva, look at those true leaves. They're doing really well. Larkspur, still doing amazingly. Not noticed anything really on these Caradonna. They were the plug plants that I got from Amazon. Ranunculus, still looking amazing. And these Larkspur are just doing so well. And then this was the latest tray of them that I brought in at the beginning of the week. So this was my latest sowing. So I'm definitely getting my numbers up now and they're looking really good. Next job on my list today is to take off all the Christmas decorations from the outside tree and move it to its new home. myself that I was going to spend five minutes in the cottage border having a bit of a tidy up and thinking about pruning this clematis. Um, so what I pulled out was some old cornflowers, some scabious which were annuals so they're not going to come back. Then I had a real good look at the clematis and I could see lots of growth up high and not much growth down below. So I thought it was time to give it a little pull, see how easy the task was going to be. And actually, as usual, got completely carried away. If I show you close up, you can see exactly what I mean. So there's new growth up the top, but not at the bottom where I want it. So it got really top heavy because I didn't prune it after its first flowering. It was just one of those things that was on my to-do list that I never did. So yeah, the bottom looks really sparse. And then there was all this growth right at the top, which is not the look that I'm going for. So I found where there was growth, where there was sort of swollen, healthy looking nodes and cut it. But actually, eventually I ended up cutting it much lower than that. Clematis does often just look like a big tangled mess but it is amazing how much it grows in a year. I figured it was better to do a higher up cut first, pull off all of the bits from the top and then go back and cut it a little bit lower. And then it was wisteria time. It was a bit windy and actually it started to rain but I thought it was a good idea to make a start on the prune. This is its, usually I do it in Feb, but I decided to make a start because it's such a big job. And then later on in the week, I will do a few other sessions of getting right into the middle of that pergola, uh, which involves me squeezing up really tiny gaps, which isn't my favourite job. Um, so I prune it back by eight buds in August, and then I actually do mine by three or four because that's how I like it. But it is a big job. And this will produce you a lot more flower buds. So it's really key that you prune it. If you've got a new wisteria, which you're training into something, whether it's a fence or a pergola, it doesn't need pruning like this now. Mm -hmm. 